Good morning. So I just got a new job as a patient transporter and I wanted to kind of talk about it and show a little bit. I can't really record while I'm at work. So right now I'm doing like a little mini get ready with me. And when I get home, I'll talk more about what I actually do and just like more of the details of it. But work starts in like an hour. So for right now I need to just get ready. <laughs> So I've been back from work for a little bit now, but I didn't want to start recording right away because there was a thunderstorm and it was really loud, but the thunder's gone now. And while I work on this school project, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my new job. This project is due in two days. I've been putting it off for a little while, but it's fine. I'll get it done. It's the vasculature of the abdomen. But anyway, so like I've said, my new job is as a patient transporter at a hospital which means that I help get all of the patients where they need to be. So like if there's a patient in the ER who's being admitted, someone's got to take them from the ER to their new room. Or maybe there's a patient who needs to get like an MRI or an ultrasound um, and they need to be brought from their room to imaging. I would do that. So it's a lot of just like pushing wheelchairs, pushing stretchers, hospital beds, getting people wherever they're supposed to be. I put like toilet paper rolls underneath the color to try to like make it sort of 3D-ish and it's not really working out too well. So, so far I really like it. Um, there's a lot to learn. Like for one thing I have to learn the entire layout of the hospital and where everything is. Um, which it's actually a little bit similar to like working in a hotel which I have a lot of experience doing. So it's not completely the worst thing to, you know, learn. Um, it's just a lot. So training is kind of long. Like there's a lot of training days before I'll ever be on my own. There's also um, a couple different areas for COVID patients. Like a part of the ICU is reserved for COVID patients and then some of the regular floors are reserved for COVID patients, so that's a little bit um, nerve-wracking because obviously that's a thing that you have to deal with and at some point I'm sure I will have to transport COVID patients to wherever they need to be because they'll probably need imaging or they'll, you know, go from ICU to just a regular room or whatever and we're the ones who move them there. So of course there's a lot of personal protection equipment that you would wear if you're transporting um, one of those patients but it's still just like a little bit of a scary thing to be like, oh no, I need to take this COVID patient to wherever. Because it's like, we try so hard in our regular lives to avoid contact with people who have COVID. And then I go to work and I'm probably going to have to purposely go see them. But I am vaccinated, so should be okay but it's still like what if i'm like that one person who gets really sick or what if i you know 
infect someone else before I know that I caught it. So it's just, it's super important to be really vigilant with all of our cleaning protocols and all of our, you know, safety protocols in that area. Someone's got to do it. Someone's got to go help those people who are very sick right now. And so right now that person is me, or one of the many people. Obviously there's a lot of other people who are more hands-on with them all the day. I cannot um, stress how amazing those nurses are who are on the COVID floors every day. Like, I just, I applaud them so much. I probably should not have waited two days before this was due to start, but mm -hmm. Would I really be me if I didn't procrastinate? So when you're transporting people around, obviously you don't get their full medical record because you don't really, I mean, need it. But sometimes it's just like, I can't help but speculate, you know? Like, I just wonder what's going on. Like, um, there was a woman in the ER who was there with her husband and they had to go um, to ultrasound and while we were picking her up from ER, um, they mentioned something about a pad for her bleeding. And this couple was very somber. A lot of times patients will joke with you, but this, you could just tell, was a couple that was not in a space for that. And so my speculation was that it was a miscarriage, um, that they were getting an ultrasound to confirm. And that's why she would have been bleeding and needing a pad. Um, but obviously I wouldn't know for sure because I don't have access to every single detail of their record. I just know where they need to go and where I need to pick them up from. But there's a lot of sad things that happen at a hospital, of course. And that's just one of the realities of working at one. There's also something that when I'm actually working in the field as an ultrasound um, technologist, then I'll have to deal with the sad realities of those types of situations. You know, I mean, it happens a lot. Of course, I couldn't really record while I was at work other than, you know, like a bunch because of patient privacy. I'm getting so much glue all over everything. I need to go grab like uh, something to wipe my hands. <laughs> I had to let this dry a little bit more before continuing the video. <laughs> so. There's some things about the new job that are stressful, but overall I'm excited to be a patient transporter. Um, and how it's going to work with school is I have classes on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. And so I work Friday through Monday. And then I don't think I'm going to work every single Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Like I'm sure even within that there will be some days off. But mostly that's what it'll be. It is going to be a little hard getting home at 11.30 on Monday nights and then having to turn around and go to school at 8 a.m. Tuesday mornings, but that's the only day of the week that I have a tight turnaround like that. There's actually a shift differential, so I'll get like an extra, it's almost an extra dollar an hour for those evening hours. So that's basically the plan for how I'm going to be working. I'm just gonna wipe this glue on my leg. Oops. I should not put off school projects because then I end up doing them two days before they're due. This that I have on here right now isn't even all of it. This is just the bigger vessels. I'm gonna have to go back and add some of the smaller vessels and then I have to label them. And then I have to print out um, some questions that go with it. So I'm gonna keep working on this um, if you have any questions about being a patient transporter or really anything about, you know, my schooling and everything, make sure to leave them below and I will try to answer them all. I also have an entire playlist on my channel of my journey with stenography school, so make sure to check that out. But thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye!